Hi, and we're with Craig McWhorter, and we've been talking about the environment and sustainability. You've also done a few radical things in your life. What might be some of the radical things which have also included um, some aspects with Greenpeace? Definitely. I, I don't, wouldn't consider them radical. <laughs> some, some would. <laughs> I know. I didn't, they didn't come to me as radical. I didn't yeah. sit there and go, I'm doing this because it's radical and I want to say radical. It was more, I'm doing this because it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's been a number of, number of things I've done there. Yeah, and what would they be? Uh, well, one was last year. We, well, not me alone, but myself and a number of other people uh, from all over the world and from all over Australia basically shut down the coal port of Newcastle for six hours. Mm -hmm. And for what reason? Well, it's not really going to stop the export of coals. We'd like to, but mm -hmm. obviously once we're gone, the coal just continues shipping. But it's more, those kind of events are more of raising awareness. It gets on the news. It's quite dramatic. The Rainbow Warrior drops anchor in the harbour. Four people climb coal reclaimers and stop them shipping coal on the ships. And a number of other people are dropping banners for aerial shots from helicopters and things inside the coal pits. And it gets the news. And people are saying, why are these people doing this? They, they, people are made to question why you know, 11 people plus a whole ship full of people are just trying to stop coal going out of Newcastle. And it's to raise awareness of Australia's contribution to climate change. When we, people say we only produce 2% of the world's CO2 from our own lifestyle, mm -hmm. we're still actually the worst per capita in that regard. But our volumes are quite low. But what they're not taking into account is the coal that we ship around the world to be burnt. And that is one, world, one third of the world's coal, which makes us by far and away the world's worst polluter. Okay, and there's going to be... A, what's happening on the coal scene though in Australia? That's been expanding, isn't it? It's trying to be expanded. Yeah, yes. do you want to talk a bit more about that? Well, Centennial Coal mm -hmm. uh, trying to open up a new coal mine in Anvil Hill. Which is? Where? It's out near Musselbrook, out west of Newcastle, yeah. uh, Upper Hunter. Yeah. And what percentage production will that add to Australia's coal production? I don't know what percentage, but I know it's 10 million tonnes of coal. Okay, yeah. which is Around. huge. It's a large amount. Mm. Yeah. So what's the alternative to coal then? You know, there's going to be people out there watching this show going, well, come on, let's get realistic, we need it. What would you say to that? Well, there's a number of alternatives. Yeah. Uh, it depends who you want to listen to. Mm -hmm. If you're listening to our Prime Minister, for example, he'll tell you that nuclear is an alternative. Mm -hmm. Or he'll tell you about that coal, well, they're calling it uh, clean coal, is mm -hmm. the nickname they've given it, and geo sequestration is the long term for it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll talk on nuclear first. Uh, it's been called clean, mm -hmm. clean energy, and what they're referring to when they say nuclear is clean is they're saying there's no CO2 coming from the, from the stack of the, of the plant, which is mostly true. But they don't take into account the, the CO2 released in the mining of uranium, mm -hmm. in the refining and the process, and the building of the plant itself is quite CO2 intensive. And it's been, but because it's clean as far as emissions from the plant go, it's being touted as, a, as a, basically a new way of generating energy. That's climate change neutral. But unfortunately, a nuclear plant for Australia is 15 to 18 years away. And even conservative estimates are saying we need to dramatically reduce our CO2 emissions within 10 years. So nuclear power, even if you want to pretend it's clean, is not going to be around in time to actually make an impact on that. Okay, so what's another alternative? Well, another alternative... That's feasible and immediate. Yeah, well, I want to talk about clean coal quickly as well. Mm -hmm. The reason this, what they're talking about doing is changing the way our coal plants work to make them clean, which mm -hmm. means no CO2 coming out of them. What they're talking about there is actually capturing the CO2, liquefying it, and pumping it underground. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that, though, is it takes 20% of the energy from the coal burnt to liquefy the CO2, and Australia would produce one cubic kilometre of liquid CO2 per annum that needs to then be pumped under the ground. And in some way that's geologically stable, and then, of course, it's going to be monitored for generations upon generations to make sure the place doesn't leak. Yep, so it's kind of just replacing one hiccup with another hiccup. Yep. So, you know, I'm going to play devil's advocate mm. because it's, you know, part of finding out information. What is an immediate, viable energy alternative? Is there one? There are a number of technologies. And the thing is, with, with renewable energies, there isn't just one solution. And some people say that makes it difficult to understand, but it actually makes it nice and diverse. That means any income and jobs from that are actually spread out over a wide area, not just you know coastal areas, but inland areas. You've got wind is obviously the most immediate example. Mm -hmm. Now, wind alone isn't enough to provide us our power needs, but it is certainly part of a solution. Because the, 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 the things that I've heard about wind is, firstly, it looks, it's an eyesore. Yeah. Secondly, it's noisy, and it takes up a lot of valuable um, land. Yeah. 
Well, so I don't know, is that viable? It totally is viable. It depends on your perspective. I mean, would you rather have a nuclear plant in your mm. valley or a few wind turbines? And they're not as noisy as people say they are. Mm. That's actually a bit of a propaganda. Would you want to live next door to one? I'd want to have one in my yard. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. I actually wouldn't mind my own personal wind turbine to generate my own small amount of energy. I mean, it's not possible in suburban mm. Sydney, but you know, I've got, you've got access to land where you can do that. And certainly a lot of our farmers, for example, who are marginal lands, mm -hmm. they keep trying to work the land and work the land. They're just killing the land, but they need to make a dollar. Mm. Well, there's certainly things we could do with their land to generate energy. Mm. Mm. And um, wind turbines and other technologies are part of that. Yeah. It's just that obviously, I mean, I, I'm all for us going as alternative as possible. And if it's solar, that's great. Mm. Why isn't solar out there more than it currently is. There's a number of reasons for that. Mm. It's not, well, as an energy, it's expensive technology mm. and it's not being subsidised by the government. And so there's no incentives for you to do that. Mm. Like the coal that we're burning and then running our houses on and running our air conditioning units on and all those sort of systems, we're not paying the full cost of that coal. Mm -hmm. The government's subsidising it and also we're not paying the environmental damage costs. So if you took into account, this is where things like carbon taxes and, and carbon trading systems come into play because coal will suddenly become very expensive because burning coal costs us more than the cost of burning coal. It costs us environmentally. And then you'll be able to, solar and things like that will be more economically feasible and they can be subsidised by the government. Is solar though expensive because the people that produce it are after high margins of it's profit? more supply and demand and the actual, what's the correct industrial term, to... Yeah, you know, the the um, I'll get a mental blank on this one. <laughs> the, the critical mass required to produce it economically is not there, so the demand yeah. for it yeah. is not high enough for them to be mass producing it in numbers to make it cost effective. Yeah. At least not here in Australia. Certainly, China is pursuing that a lot more aggressively than we are. Okay. But if every home had a solar panel for hot water and solar yeah. panels for general energy, most of your days here in Australia are sunny. It's hot. You turn your air conditioning on rather than drawing your air conditioning power from from a coal plant, you're drawing mm. it from your own roof. Okay, let, let's, let's weigh the proverbial magic wand. Yeah. Put all costs aside, what would be the most you know, user-friendly alternative energy system for the planet? Yeah. It's got to be the sun, surely. It's got to be the sun, but there are issues like people will readily say, any skeptic to watching this show will go, oh yes, but there's CO2 produced in making solar panels, and there yeah. are. Yeah. But I'll be looking at things like uh, solar chimneys mm -hmm. and uh, thermal power or hot rocks or whatever the term for it is this week. And thermal chimneys basically work from drawing hot air from the bottom, say in the desert region, and sucking it up through a chimney and turning turbines. Mm -hmm. That's, that supplies a base load, unlike wind and solar on roofs, which give you a nice spectrum of power coming from a number of locations. They alone don't generate enough power to be your base load and replace power stations. And solar chimneys do. Okay. And so does geothermal power, which is again passing things through the earth, finding the hot rocks, which we have plenty of here in Australia, to just generate power from the from the earth's own heat. Okay. So back into some of the other things that you've done out there, like along the Greenpeace line. What else have you done that's been a bit, you know, daredevilish? Yeah. Well, <laughs> my favourite one of all. Uh -huh. I don't know how many reviewers would remember mm -hmm. the uh, nuclear protest Greenpeace did in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And there's a yacht that repeatedly sailed into into those zones and. The French boarded them and beat them up, and the footage of this was brought out of that by one of the young ladies sequestering it in a very private place, but the mm -hmm. French didn't search, so the footage got out. Uh, that ship called the Vega, and last year I got to sail that up in Queensland uh, to interrupt some of the US military exercises that were going on at Shoalwater. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other little episodes like that you can share with us? Well, those are the main ones. Oh. They're my favourite ones. Everything else, there are a lot of other ones, and they're all small, those are the most memorable ones for me. Okay. They, they range from things like dumping a ton of coal on New South Wales Parliament's doorsteps. You didn't? Well, not myself alone, but oh. yes, a whole bunch of us did. Yeah. Did we you had get to... trouble for that? Do they no, know you but... did it? Well, we did it. We're public, <laughs> the cameras were there. We also cleaned it up. Okay. And we put a nice little tarp down so the stones of Macquarie Street weren't blackened from the coal. Did you get, I mean, were you convicted or anything? No, no. We, we, we were there, we closed the street. It was quite a spectacular little stunt as well. Okay. We had a whole lot of people dressed up as, um, as road workers, and mm -hmm. they just blocked off Macquarie Street. We drove our truck in, dumped the coal, took the footage, the camera crews and news all turned up, and we were there with our banners and our signs, and then we scooped the coal back into the truck after about half an hour, and we're off again. When was this? 
oh, last 2005 sometime. Really? Mm. Didn't hear about it. It's one of those things, you've got to catch the news that night. If you don't catch yeah. the news that night, you wouldn't see it probably. Oh. You little radical you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break and come back and hear more about Craig's journey.